Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Scholes. Today we have a story from the Japanese fairy tales by Grace James. And it's a sad tale. It's a sad tale about a man who tries to do good and has nothing good come of it. This is the story of a fisherman, the fisherman Hiroshima. Hiroshima was a fisherman of the inland sea. Every night he plied his trade. He caught fishes both great and small, being upon the sea through the long hours of darkness. Thus, he made his living. Upon a certain night the moon shone brightly, making plain the paths of the sea, and Hiroshima kneeled in his boat and dabbled his right hand in the green water. Lo, he leaned till his hair lay spread upon the waves, and he paid no heed to his boat that listed or to his trailing fishing net. He drifted in his boat till he came to a haunted place, and he was neither waking nor sleeping, for the moon made him mad. Then the daughter of the deep sea arose, and she took the fisherman in her arms and sank with him down, down to her cold sea cave. She laid him upon a sandy bed, and long did she look upon him. She cast her sea spell upon him, and sang her sea songs to him, and held his eyes with hers. He said, Who are you, lady? She told him, The daughter of the deep. Let me go home, he said. My little children wait and are tired. Nay, rather stay with me, she said. Hiroshima, though fisherman of the inland sea, thou art beautiful, thy long hair is twisted round my heart, go not from me, only forget thy home. Ah, now, said the fisherman, let be, for the dear God's sake, I would go to mine own. But she said again, Hiroshima, thou fisherman of the inland sea, I'll set thy couch with pearl, I spread thy couch with seaweed and sea flowers. Thou shalt be king of the deep sea, and we will reign together. Let me go home, said Hiroshima. My little children wait and are tired, but she said, Hiroshima, thou fisherman of the inland sea, never be afraid of the deep sea tempest. We will roll rocks about our cavern doors, Neither be afraid of the drowned dead, thou shalt not die. Ah, now, said the fisherman, let be, for the dear God's sake, I would go to mine own. Stay with me this one night. Nay, not one. Then the daughter of the deep sea wept, and Hiroshima saw her tears. I will stay with you this one night, he said. So after the night was past, she brought him up to the sand and the seashore. Are we near your home? She said. He told her, Within a stone's throw. Take this, she said, in memory of me. She gave him a casket of -of mother-of-pearl. It was rainbow-tinted, and its clasps were of coral and of jade. Do not open it, she said. Oh, fisherman, do not open it. And with that, she sank, and was no more seen the daughter of the deep sea. As for Hiroshima, he ran beneath the pine trees to come to his dear home, and as he went he laughed for joy, and he tossed up the casket to catch the sun. Ah, me, he said, the sweet scent of the pines. So he went calling to his children with a call that he had taught them like a seabird's note. Soon he said, Are they yet asleep? It is strange they do not answer me. Now when he came to his house he found four lonely walls, moss-grown. Nightshade flourished on the threshold, death lilies by the hearth, Dianthus and Lady Fern, no living soul was there. Now what is this? cried Hiroshima. Have I lost my wits? Have I left my eyes in the deep sea? He sat down upon the grassy floor and thought long. The dear gods help me, he said. Where is my wife and where are my little children? He went to the village where he knew the stones in the way and where every tiled and tilted eave was to him most familiar. And here he found folk walking to and fro, going about their business. But they were all strange to him. Good morrow, they said. Good morrow, wayfarer, do you tarry in our town? He saw children at their play, and often he put his hand beneath their chins to turn their faces up. Alas, he did it all in vain. Where are my little children? he said. 
Oh, Lady Quan on the merciful, peradventure the gods know the meaning of all this, it's too much for me. When sunset came, his heart was heavy as stone, and he went and stood at the parting of the ways outside of the town. As men passed, he pulled them by the sleeve. Friend, said he, I ask your pardon. Did you know a fisherman of this place called Urashima? And the men that passed by answered him, We never heard of such a one. There passed by the peasant people from the mountain. Some went afoot, some rode on patient pack-horses. They were singing their country songs, and they carried baskets of wild strawberries or sheaves of lilies bound upon their backs, and the lilies nodded as they went. Pilgrims passed by, all clad in white, with staves and rice-straw hats, sandals bound fast with gourds of water. Swiftly they went, softly they went, thinking of holy things. And lords and ladies passed by, in brave attire and great array, borne in their gilded cargo. The night fell. I lose sweet hope, said Urashima. But there passed by an old, old man. Oh, old, old man, cried the fisherman. You have seen many days. Know you aught of Urashima. In this place he was born and bred. Then the old man said, There was one of that name, but, sir, that was drowned long years ago. My grandfather could scarce remember him in the time that I was a little boy. Good stranger, it was many, many, many years ago. Hiroshima said, Is he dead? No man more dead than he. His sons are dead and their sons are dead. Good even to you, stranger. Then Hiroshima was afraid. But he said, I must go to the green valley where the dead sleep. And to the valley he took his way. He said, How chill the night wind blows through the grass. The trees shiver and the leaves turn their pale backs to me. He said, Hail, sad moon, that showest me all the quiet graves. Thou art nothing different from the moon of old. And he said, Here are my son's graves, and their son's graves. Poor Hiroshima, there is no man more dead than he, yet I am lonely among the ghosts. Who will comfort me? said Hiroshima. The night wind sighed and nothing more. Then he went back to the seashore. Who will comfort me? cried Hiroshima. But the sky was unmoved, and the mountain waves of the sea rolled on. Hiroshima said, There is the casket, and he took it from his sleeve and opened it. There rose from it a faint white smoke that floated away and out to the far horizon. I grow very weary, said Hiroshima. In a moment his hair had turned as white as snow. He trembled, his whole body shrank, his eyes grew dim. He that had been so young and lusty swayed and tottered where he stood. I am old, said Hiroshima. He made to shut the casket lid, but dropped it, saying, Nay, the vapor of smoke is gone forever. What matters it? Then he laid down his length upon the sand and died. And that is the story of Hiroshima from Japanese fairy tales by Grace James. And it's... It's a version of the story of Hiroshima Taro. It skips by the part where he does good by saving a sea turtle that's being tortured by some children, but really leans into him coming back from the sea to find all gone and changed, and himself still young, but very much alone. For that reason, it is a very, very sad story, but I do like it. It's sad in a sweet way, as things can often be. This is Dan Scholes for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere that you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram and threads at Folktale Project. If you'd like to help support the project, you can head over to patreon.com slash folktale project. Or you could always just share the stories with someone you love. I do appreciate that. As always, thank you so much for listening.